think it would be extremely unfortunate if this were the last time I saw you, Mrs. Hoyt. My office is across the bay, Hong Kong side, on Connaught Road. My car. It just might be useful someday. Hong Kong is like any other large city, very difficult without friends. I suggest you call me before you come over. I'm not always in. Mrs. Hoyt? Yes? I'm Frank Stewart, United States Consulate. Oh, it's good of you to meet me. It was rather a mandate after the storm you started in the newspapers and with your senator, but I'm sure it'll be a pleasure. Would you come with me, please? Tell me, Mr. Stewart, do you have any new information? I'm sorry. Well, look, you must realize there's been very little we can do. This is a crown colony, you know. Well, the British have been most cooperative. I I've made an appointment for you tomorrow morning with the inspector who found your husband's cameras. You mean I have to wait until tomorrow morning? He's with the Marine police. He's out on patrol now. I'm sure he'll give you what information he has. Inspector Merriweather, very nice chap. However, I think it's only fair to warn you well, not to expect too much. The British naturally take a most realistic attitude. Oh, they have made inquiries, done what they could, but they are reluctant to force an issue over a foreigner who went into China without even a visa. I'm going to find my husband, Mr. Stewart. I made a reservation for you at the Peninsula Hotel. It's just a short way from the docks. Business is as usual. Rotten. Well, I thought perhaps with a ship arriving. If anyone wants a guide, I'll let you know. I, uh, I've had so many obligations lately. If it is not inconvenient, I could use a small advance. It is inconvenient. Go away. Don't start telling me about the good old days when you were a big general. Go back to China. You know I can't do that. Then just go away. I'm busy. Morning, monsieur. Good morning, Goldie. Breakfast quick. We're filling water, monsieur. And make a double. Goldie, take a bottle of champagne to the fright wig. Maybe to start her day off right. But please don't tell her where it came from. I don't want to have to talk to her. Hey. Madame or Mademoiselle? Just come off ship. I can see that. She American girl. And no man with her? It just doesn't happen these days. Find out all about her. The boy will show you to your room, Mrs. Wright. Coxon. 
Sampan, just take a look around. It might keep me awake. want to see your ID card. I do nothing bad. I know. Pictures. Me. Pretty good. You should be in films. Oh, American man take pictures. Really? You stay out of trouble. Carry on, 303. It's almost 4 o'clock. Dot lock. Good morning, sir. Good morning. The lady is waiting, sir. I shall never get any sleep. American lady, sir. Completely forgotten. Send in those cameras, 303. Yes, sir. Inspector Merriweather. Mrs. Hoyt. Good morning. How do you do? Please forgive my appearance. I've been mucking about the harbor all night. It's pretty warm for so early in the day. There's probably a typhoon brewing. Inspector, you know why I'm here. It's unfortunate about your husband, Mrs. Hoyt. I wish he'd talked to one of us before he went into China. We could probably have discouraged him. Well, what's wrong with wanting to do a picture story on life in China as it is today? Would you sit down, Mrs. Hoyt? Yes, thank you. I'd like to point out to you the futility of a one-woman crusade against a whole nation. Official inquiries from my government have brought nothing but silence. Well, surely there must be some sort of underground, Inspector. Mrs. Hoyt, I'm very junior on this force. My only connection with this affair is that I happened to find your husband's cameras on the junk that took him behind the lines. What about the captain of this junk? Couldn't we find him and question him? Yeah, we did that. Of course, we could do it again. Unfortunately, there are thousands of junks. They're continually moving about. Also, the chances are the junk master might not tell us the truth. The water people are very uncooperative. And worse yet, a lot of them work for Hank Lee. But who's Hank Lee? A disgrace to your country. Why? What does he do? Unofficially, I'd like to say your Hank Lee is a gangster. Smuggling is one of his lesser vices. He'd do anything to make a dollar and has. Unfortunately, he's also very clever. We haven't been able to prove a single thing yet. Well, now, how can he operate? This is British territory. A few miles of land, yes, but just outside, the waters are Chinese. There, they do as they please, and so does Hank Lee. Oh, inside the colony, he's very careful. Could you put me in touch with Hank Lee? I'd be the last person in the world to set you up with Lee. He doesn't fancy policemen. Come in. Thank you. Those are Lewis's cameras. By Joe. Last night, I came across a sampan girl. She had some very recent pictures of herself, most professional. You know, Mrs. Hyde, a good policeman is supposed to stick to the facts and ignore the existence of hope. However, these girls move around a great deal, but if she's still there, I'll go and talk to her. She may be able to tell us something. Thank you, Inspector. You're a good policeman. My chief might not feel the same way, so please remember I'm acting unofficially. You might make a few inquiries at a place called Tweedy's. It's just off Nathan Road, open lights only. Your husband went there frequently. Thank you. They make you feel so very glad. Clips or sing and make up rhyme. 
And so all women is trouble. I don't care if she is queen of Bulgaria or head of the Girl Scouts. I don't mean there is anything wrong with women. I like them. But not in my place, understand? Because a woman alone is trouble. And two of them alone is twice as much trouble. And three of them alone can start a riot with a smile. Oh, it ain't their fault. You take a creature God put on this earth and train her from the time she can think that her only chance for a decent life is to be as attractive as she can all the time, and you got yourself trouble. If I was a woman, I'd be trouble too. Now, if you try to separate the respectable troublemakers from the unrespectable ones, you'll just drive yourself crazy, understand? How are you going to say one woman is wrong because she accepts a slight financial reward from a guy she don't know too well, and another woman is right when she puts the bite on her husband for a fur coat he can't afford, so he goes bankrupt and takes a dive out of the window? Who's right? What will you have, miss? Scotch and soda, please. Thank you. Told them waiters a thousand times never to serve no woman who was alone. You know her, Matt? I've never seen her before. She ain't local. Gunner? She ain't trouble. Who says? I do. There's no paint on her hoe. And her fingernails ain't red. And she's having a real drink instead of a phony orange. And she ain't paying no attention to them Aussies at the table. Hey, she's looking for somebody. Vicky? Throw her out, I say. Yeah, I guess I have to. Let one of them get away with it, they'll all come. Hello, sister. Kind of in the wrong place, ain't you? I don't think so. Beat it. Now, forget the drink. It's on the house. Hello, Jane. Sorry I'm late. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. Hi, Twitty. Hi, my boy. Dinner, please. I'll send the waiter with the sauce. Well, whatever your name is, I, I don't know whether to thank you or not. Well, it all depends on how long you wanted to stay here. Unescorted women are poisoned in Tweedy's place. So I gathered. My name is René Dupont Chevalier. I'm a Frenchman. Oh, there we are. I think you'd better leave now. Mais pourquoi? You haven't accomplished what you came for. You couldn't stay here without me. Now look, a girl like you doesn't come to Hong Kong alone these days unless it's very necessary. You have much on your mind. I can see that by the way you look, the way you talk and walk. And I like what I see. You missed. Oh, many people wear wedding rings. Well, this would mean something. Ah, uh -huh. so? You're a cynic. I'm also thirsty. Where's your husband? I don't know. Well, this is most convenient. Will he stay away like a gentleman? He's a prisoner somewhere in China. Oh. I also was a prisoner. It seems a long, long time ago. Now I got it. Hoyt. He was a photographer, wasn't he? You know him? Well, we had a few drinks one night. A chap named Fernand Rocker was along. They're making some plans together. Where does this man Rocker live? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I talk too much anyway. Now, look, if you don't mind, I'm getting kind of a little sleepy. You take care of me, uh, and I'd like to. Oh. Oh. Uh -uh, sister, I'll look after this for him. I'll beat it. I will not. Not until I'm ready. You want me to call the police? Big Matt, Gunner. Call him to the usual place and let him sleep it off, huh? Eh? 
You must be real hard up. Yeah. I don't need your money. Tell me, do you know where I can find Maxine Chan? Yeah, she runs a curio shop on Hankow Road. A lot of junk, but she sells it. Thanks. Did you know Louis Hoyt? Hoyt? Used to recite poetry a lot all the time, smiling as if he had some joke he wouldn't tell nobody. Yeah, I know him. Sometimes he was an interesting problem. He's dead. Well, you must be mistaken. You're wrong. Well, I ain't wrong very often. People keep me posted. I sure remember his poetry now because it was so pretty. He was awful good at it. Made up some of his own, too. <laughs> very surprising. Why so interested? You chasing him for some special reason? He's my husband. Oh. Too bad. Well, you still got a lot of your life ahead of you, and a young widow who is clean and in no trouble is at a premium Tell me premium exactly how you know my husband is dead. If I was to tell you exactly, I'd never learn anything else, and that I can't afford to do. Now, run along like the little lady you pretend to be. You've got no idea what a strain it is keeping a place like this respectable. Do you know where I can find a man named Roka? No, beat it. Chan. I'm Maxine. May I help you? I'm so glad you speak English. I went to school in California. I was a cheerleader for UCLA. <laughs> I know you. You're Louis Hoyt's wife. He showed me a picture, and it was a smiling picture. So now I recognize you. Well, I'm glad he did. That's a healthy sign. Don't have to worry about your husband. He's a wonderful guy. He makes everyone around him feel good. Do you know that he left Hong Kong? Oh, no. I've wondered. For three months now, I've tried everything to find him. Can you help me? I don't know what I could do. Would a man named Roka have any information? He might. They spent a lot of time together. Where could I find him? I don't know. He used to work for Hank Lee. Do you know Hank Lee? Of course. I've heard a lot about him. What kind of a man is he? I think he's the most wonderful man in the world. Well, how could I approach him? I'm a, I'm a total stranger. I was once a stranger to him. He put up the money for this shop. Oh, I haven't seen him in a long time. He may be away. I'll telephone for you. Why? Hank Sin Sang Hai Shima. Oh, I'm going to. Hanka, you have Maxine. How are you going to? You're going to. Hanka, you know that Louis Hoyt is going to be in the United States. He's going to be in Hong Kong. He's going to be in Hong Kong. Yes. He's very good. I'm going to be in the United States. Be ready at the hotel, 5.30 tonight. He will send a car for you. Will you be there? He didn't invite me. Thank you, Maxine. I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Hoyt. The sampan girl isn't there anymore. Probably got frightened. And there's no way to find her. Two and a half million people in the Hong Kong area. I'll keep looking, though. You seem to have done a little better. This car is well known. I'm praying he'll help me. He might. Five eight three zero six, please. Hello. 
Ghana. Madame Dupree here. I'm hungry and I'm broke. I have some interesting information. It should be worth a meal to Tweedy. I'll tell you when I get the chow. Hang on a minute. It's Dupree. She wants to trade some information for a meal. Tweedy says chow down. Well, Mrs. Hoyt, how nice to see you again. I must congratulate Hank for succeeding where I've failed. Is Mr. Lee a friend of yours? We're associates in a business way. But don't forget, Mrs. Hoyt, if you need anything, I'm at 464 Connaught Road West. Ding dong. Yeah, but there's no fun in shooting women. Well, not unless they steal your cat. What's your name, partner? Billy Lee. What's yours? Jane Hoyt. Shake, partner. Howdy. Say, where do you come from? America. Killed any Indians? Not lately. Ever ride in a stagecoach? My daddy says women are always riding them. It's in the cinema, too. Well, sort of. I've been on a bus. When I go to America, I'm going to arrest all the bandits. I'll hang the very bad ones from the trees. Hey, Billy, don't be so bloodthirsty. Hi, Daddy. Hi. I'm Hank Lee, Mrs. Hoyt. She says she comes from America, but she's never killed an Indian or a bandit, I bet. I'm going to buy you a spaceship just to get you off the subject. There aren't any Indians on the stars. OK, OK, then shoot yourself some Martians. How can I when they have no blood? <laughs> Will you tell me how kids know such things? I've often wondered. Well, you should hear his sister. After listening to her prayers just hey, now, Daddy! she... Daddy! You could, too, do it. What are you doing out of bed? You could, too, do it. Do what? Take a big balloon, fill it up with dark night air, and then let it out when you want to sleep in the daytime. You go to bed. Both of you. How many children do you have, Mr. Lee? Three. The oldest boy's going to school in the States. He's 13, and I miss him. You know, somehow I... I didn't picture you as being married. I'm not. Never have been. How about a drink? I have some of the best sherry you ever tasted. Sit over there, please. Thanks. Many refugees in Hong Kong, the water supply is very critical. I don't like to put a strain on it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Would you like to hear Chicago? Chicago? Sometimes I sit out here alone and just listen to it. I had this recording made specially. I take it Chicago is your home. Well, it was once. I guess it's here now. And you don't seem very cheerful about it. You always want what you can't have. They did a pretty good job of this, except they left out the steam shovels and the elevator. 
Uh, Maxine told me about your husband. Can I talk to you about him? It'll make you feel better. I was hoping you could help me. That's just possible. Uh, my main business is helping Hank Lee. What about the little girl and Billy and the boy in the States? Were they just a matter of helping Hank Lee? No, oh, Billy was a special case. Somebody left him at the gate. I came home late one night and almost ran over him. Naturally, I couldn't leave him there. Naturally. And the little girl, where does she come from? Mars, where the people have no blood? <laughs> uh, she was born to a pal of mine in Bangkok. Slight mistake. And the boy in the States, where does he come from? Manila. He sort of attached himself to me. He was on the streets right after the war, eyes bigger than his stomach, like so many others. Little beggar was always at my heels with that no mama, no papa routine. I found out he was telling the truth. What could I do? Were you in the service, Mr. Lee? Wasn't everybody. Tell me something. You planning on having some more children? You're talking to a confused man. My voice was never made for singing lullabies. <laughs> You know what I like about you? You're in trouble and you can still laugh. That takes something special. How about some dinner? The cook boils me out if I'm not right on time. Well, I hadn't thought... Oh, come on, you'll enjoy it. New England boiled dinner tonight. Take you right back home. Now, what could a dame like her be doing at Hank Lee's fancy auto? Talking with a police inspector. They finally catching up with Hank Lee? Don't make sense. You got any ideas, Icky? Icky, you gone deep. Huh? I say if the British are putting a bongo on Hank, maybe we could sort of appropriate some of his business. You got any ideas? Yeah, I got a wonderful idea. My curiosity won't stand it any longer. What are all these books for? Seasoning with my food. Except for breakfast with the kids, I usually eat alone. I got books all over the house. They keep me company. And I hope they make me smart, but I don't know. I got an awful lot to make up. Sometimes I think it's impossible. I never went beyond the sixth grade. I'm trying to fix things so I don't move my lips when I read. That isn't easy. But in the meantime, I live it up pretty well for a gravel truck driver, and I own the biggest fleet of junks in the China coast. What do the junks do? Carry cargo, naturally. No use fooling with fishing junks. They never make any money. But your junks do. Plenty. Go on, eat. I'm not very hungry. Mr. Lee, I have $7,000. I'll give it to you the minute Lewis is over the border. I don't want your money. Oh, it's not my money. It was subscribed in small amounts by his friends. What kind of a man has that many friends? Lewis is kind. Well, $7,000 doesn't mean anything to me. How about Fernand Roca or Tweedy? Would they be interested? Lady, you need a protector. It's Hilo. In Saginaw. Dodger. Rita is about to arrive. If you're expecting someone, perhaps... No, no, no. Stick around. Uh, we'll watch her entrance. She kicks up quite a fuss. Your friend sounds very interesting. She isn't exactly a friend of mine. She's too hard on jumps. Come on, the balcony is the best place. Rita. I don't know why they name them after women. Except they're sort of unpredictable. Will you help me? Why should I? What's the percentage in risking my neck for another man's wife? I should have known better. You know, for a little while tonight, I thought I'd met a real man. The kind people talk about and read about. But I was wrong. You're a shell. A lonely, blowhard shell. You fancy yourself a soldier of fortune, and you partially get away with it because you're in a foreign country. But to me, mister, you're just a gangster, a throwback. I hope you enjoy living with yourself.
What do you like when you really get mad? You almost found out. Drop him again when you're ready to make a deal that might be interesting. I don't need you. I'll find him myself, somehow. I wish you luck. Hi, right, Jack. What's the matter with you, Austin? You're afraid of a little old wind? Now, when I used to fly into Hanoi... All the, the wind comes from garlic-eating Frenchies. Oh, is that so? Waiter, another beer. You gonna let him get away with that, Percy? What's the matter? Are you sick? Ain't she wonderful? Ain't she beautiful? Who? Her? You're drunk. I ain't drunk. I've never been more sober. I love her. Ain't you never gonna grow up? If you can't remember your own age, remember hers. She's a princess, a genuine Russian princess. Yeah, well, she costs a lot to feed. I don't care. surprise you to know that before I came to the Far East, I was a Welsh magistrate. Oh, in the stole it! Go higher a hole. And as such, I am still invested with authority to perform a civil ceremony. Ah, uh, sit down. Gentlemen. <laughs> Gentlemen! Will you please be so good as to postpone your disagreement? Thank you. It's been some time since I joined two souls in matrimony. Icky and Madame Dupre have sought my assistance. Wait a minute. I don't want nothing going on in here that ain't legal. Are you sure you know the right words to say? Certainly. Well, go on. What are you waiting for? I think we might create an aisle with the chairs just along there. Now, everybody help and greet it. Will you give the bride away? No. Well, someone must. We want things quite proper. All right. Stop. <laughs> 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 
Yes, miss. I'd like to see Mr. Lee. Name, please. Mrs. Hoyt. There's no money in it. Dump it in the sea. And get those three junks up here from Noah. Yes, sir. What do you want? Lady, wait outside. Name Mrs. Hoyt. Mrs. Hoyt? Send her in. Get out of here. You got a lot of nerve. I need it. I like nerve. I've... I've reconsidered some of the things I said. And now you want to do business? Yes. Look at me. I went everywhere today. Any place he might have been, trying for any bit of information. I was hoping. Take it easy. You know, there's a place called the Peacock. Serves the best food in Hong Kong, the real thing. Ever had it? No. Try it with me? Yes. I sure like the way you make decisions. Duck Law, Duck Law. The Chicago arrives any minute. I just had a signal. Unload and stand by until you hear from me. Yes, sir. How come you didn't try to stop that husband of yours from going into China? It wasn't very bright of him or you. I never tried to stop him from doing anything he wanted to do. I married him for what he was, not for what I thought he should be. Sounds like he could use a little growing up. Well, if I tried to talk him out of it, after a while it'd be something else and something else. Until finally, I might manufacture a man I could barely recognize. And I could never change him back. Well, here's the peacock. Hope you worked yourself up an appetite. That I did. Walking with you is sort of a track meet. Oh, poor little girl. Maybe I'd better carry you up the stairs, hmm? You'd look pretty silly if you fell on your face. I wish you hadn't done that. Why? Well, for one thing, Lewis isn't here to defend himself. I'm beginning to wish he was. That'll be it, Ying. 
When Captain Hank come back? Long time now, no come. Mr. Lee is indulging himself in the lighter pursuits these days. You tell him, please. I keep his cabin nice. All men like to see Cap Hank. Chiro. Hey, Guy Lama. And that's my story. Officially, I'm dead. The Navy was glad to get rid of me. I sucked an officer the night the Japs gave in. Were you in the right or the wrong? You're always wrong when you hit an officer. You know what I think? I think you liked being in the wrong. Take that I'm better than you look off your face. It doesn't suit you. You're with me now because you think I can help your husband, which is just looking out for yourself. Well, all right, maybe I will. I want your husband out of China more than you do. I wish he was sitting here right now so I could stand a chance with you. I can't fight a ghost. Now, everything clear? It's very clear. Well, now that you know, we'll let it ride temporarily. Until I see what I can do about your husband. the new literature I sent you. There wasn't anything else to do. Who writes your stuff? Harriet Beecher Stowe? How did it impress you? I prefer comic books. As an American, you of all people should know that building a new nation is no joke. Nations fall when they lose their sense of humor. Who said that? I did. Just dreamed it up. You have an interesting mind, Howard. Would you give me a straight answer to one question? It depends. What would happen to a Chinese who enter your country illegally and photograph military installation? I did not take any military photographs. I came here to get a scoop for a magazine. We could possibly have forgiven you if you were not an army officer, as it is. It was a long time ago. I was a shaved tail lieutenant. The army and I separated permanently. If you would give me the full story, I would do my best to arrange your early return to Hong Kong. I've told you all there is to tell a hundred times. It was my own idea, and it looks like I'm stuck with it. I suggest you think about your wife in connection with telling us the real reason why you came to China. I've been thinking plenty about her. Her name is Jane, isn't it? No. Matilda. Your Jane is the most attractive woman. Where is she tonight? How would I know? We are better informed. She is in Hong Kong with a man named Henry Lee. You have been away now for a considerable time. Turn the record over on the other side. Interesting, isn't it, Lieutenant? Stop calling me Lieutenant. You will notice that Mrs. Hoyt is not exactly grieving at your absence. She always liked jokes. Notice her hands. She's reaching across the table holding his. Even my limited knowledge of Americans assures me that it is not customary to hold hands during the telling of a joke. I suggest you visualize her. Say a month from now, in that man's arm, see him caress her, listen to the quick breathing, and have the courage to admit that in her ecstasy, she could quite possibly forget you have existed. The acoustics are terrible in this place. I can't hear a word you say. Very well. We have plenty of time. As you know, we Chinese are renowned for our patience. I trust it will not be too many years before your hearing improves. <laughs>
Hank, what struck this place? We've been closed for a couple of days, a little celebration. Hickey got himself married. He was lonesome, I guess. People get that way. You ain't been around a long time, Hank. I might want you to do me a favor. You still swiping money? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about those dollars the American Chinese send you to give to their poor relations in China. Well, I'm just doing those people a favor. You take too big a cut. I got to maintain a lot of contacts, so I take a little commission. You might say I'm just being humane. Yeah, you're humane, all right. But it's those contacts I want to talk to you about. You know a man named Louis Hoyt? Name sure sounds familiar. It should. You told his wife he was dead. I just felt sorry for her. You never felt sorry for anybody. Why so interested, Hank? This man a friend of yours or something? Yeah. And I sure wouldn't want anything to happen. Well, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Then how Hoyt. come you got the word he was dead? Well, I get all kinds of odd information. This is a public place. People come and they go. I got ears. <laughs> Listen, you're talking to Hank Lee. Let me down. Tell me where you got the word or I'll use you for a shillelagh and really wreck this place. All right, but let me down, Hank. <laughs> How much did Hoyt pay you? Five hundred dollars. Who'd you set him up with? Lim Chow Wu. He's got a junk. He runs money up to Canton for me once in a while. Did you guarantee Hoyt he'd get out of China? No, I didn't do that. Well, maybe I did sort of suggest that we make arrangements later. But he was awful eager, Hank, awful eager. Who told you he was dead? Lim Chow Wu. How do you know he isn't lying? I don't. Find out. If he's dead, I want proof of how he died. Every last detail, where and how. If he's alive, I want to know where he is. Exactly. Understand? How can I do all that? This is Tuesday. Phone me Thursday morning at 9 o'clock with the answers. Or I'll buy the firecrackers for your funeral. Hank, this is going to cost lots of money. Use those dollars you got from Hoyt. Wake up. Go get Icky away from his bride. We got a lot to do. I have been praying for you. Where have you been? Oh, counting my money. Is there so much that it takes so long? I am older by almost a year. You look younger. <laughs> you are learning. Mm. I need some information. I have to find a man in China, an American. Oh? Mm. He may be dead. Then he should be easy to find, because he will not move. No, no, not so easy. He's being held a prisoner. He is your friend? No, she... He's the husband of a woman. You sound like a fool. She's a wonderful woman. <laughs> you have needed a woman too long. I want you to send inquiries to your temples on the mainland. Your priests and nuns seem to know everything. Find out where the American is. If the British find out, I will have much trouble. Yes, I know. So be careful. His name is Hoyt. He's a maker of pictures. He crossed the border sometime in June or late May, according to our calendar. Now, that's all I know, except that he hasn't any sense. But if you want the woman, why do you want the husband? It has to be done. You are thinking different than ever before, like a chicken instead of an eagle. When will you have some news? Allow me five days. Oh, that's too long. Mm, three days, then. Oh, that's better. But it will cost you more. Don't waste any time, little mother. Your breakfast, monsieur. Thank you, Goldie. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, bonjour, mademoiselle. Mais vous parlez le français? Oh, don't get excited. That's all the French I know. Please sit down, will you? No, thank you. Do you remember telling me about a man named Roca? I did? 
Yes, you said you didn't know where he lived. Peculiar, because I do. But then I say a lot of peculiar things when I'm enchanted with a grape. Where does he live? Macau. Pretends to run a language school on the Rue de Felicidade. Thank you. I want to get to Macau as quickly as possible. The ferry leaves in 40 minutes. You could just make it. Would you fix my ticket while I make a phone call? Certainly. It will be $18 first class. Oh, yes. You'll have to hurry. There we are. Shall I recommend you as a guide? I know it'll be a risk for you that close to China, but it may fill your rice bowl. I shall do it myself. Give me that ticket. Remember, General, our usual commission. When Mr. Lee returns home, will you tell him that I've gone to Macau? Yes. Mrs. Hoyt will be back tomorrow. Thank you. Madam, your ticket. Oh, thank you. General Paul Lin, at your service. May I suggest myself as a guide? I lived near Macau some years ago, and I speak Portuguese and all Chinese dialects. I am certain I could make your journey easier and more interesting. And my fee is very little. How much is very little? I would be quite content to leave it to your generosity, madam. All right. Thank you. Over there, China, the oldest mother in the world. It is the womb and the tomb. All of the emperors and the warlords, invaders and conquerors and experimenters could not change her in 10,000 years. It is my country. <laughs> I've become a garrulous old man. Forgive me if I talk too much. I like to listen to you. Music's golden tongue flattered to tears this aged man and poor. Shelley, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. I always get him mixed Keats. up with... <laughs> I once attempted to translate him into Chinese. There were days when we had leisure for such things. Uh, What's the matter? I believe the engines have stopped. The vibration has gone. Please, please come with me. Everybody, come inside, please. The cheek of these chaps stopping the ship. What a bother. Well, after all, they have a perfect right. These are their waters. They don't travel very often. They're probably not interested in us. What are they going to do to him? I'm afraid we'll never know. Enjoy Macau, madam. Remember your friend Poland. I do not think all Chinese are barbarians. Are you Mr. Oka? Yes. Please, come in. Won't you sit down, please? Yes, thank you. You wish to inquire about language lessons? I assume you are interested in Portuguese. I'm Louis Hoyt's wife. I'd like to talk to you alone. 
My pleasure. Uh, but you needn't concern yourself about my guest. She doesn't understand a word of English. I find it more relaxing not to teach her any. Mr. Roca, I'm trying to find out where my husband is. There's nothing difficult about that. He's in Canton. In Canton? Well, you, you make it sound so simple, as if he wasn't being held a prisoner. A guest of the government, you might say. Of course, certain restrictions have been placed on his movements, but if his friends really wanted him out, it would be a very simple matter. Oh, now, look, Mr. Roker. Two governments have been trying without results for three months. I'm afraid they are too naive, too honest. Actually, it's only necessary to arrange the transfer of a sum of money to the proper authorities. It would be in the nature of a fine for crossing the border illegally. How much money? If you are suggesting that I act as an intermediary, I would be most happy to undertake the task. Louis is my friend. I'm very fond of him. What guarantee would I have that Louis would ever cross the border? None, Mrs. Hoyt. In these matters, one must act on faith, and then, as you say in America, keep your fingers crossed. Of course, your risk is small. I would never permit you to pay the whole sum in advance. I would suggest a small amount to show goodwill. And then the final payment would be made when Louis is delivered. Suppose I gave you a check for $500. How soon could you start to work? A check? A traveler's I'm... check. Oh. Well, I could start making phone calls right away. Uh, it would probably take most of the night, but I don't mind losing a little sleep for Louis. If you will wait here, I could perhaps have some favorable word for you in an hour. She will take you to her room, where you can rest more comfortably. signature is as simple as her mind. Where are you going? I've observed that well-financed gamblers seldom lose. After she quiets down, give her some tea, then get the rest. Stoker to come to my office right away. People wait for you. Oh, what's this? A religious convention? Well, well, Hank. Uh, this is my old friend, Father Xavier. He has just come from the mainland. Shake hands with the sinner. I do so constantly. He knows where your man is. There'd be great risk in bringing him out. Is it so important to you? Yes and no. Where is he? In Canton. Our mission was near the place where the second gate stood in the old city. It's now a prison. Is he okay? Well, I should think so. Thanks. If I can help you in Hong Kong, let me know. And thank you, little mother. Now run along, burn some joss for me. And father, I could use a good word with your boss. Remember, he's yours too, Mr. Lee. Be sensible. If you leave him in Canton, the woman will be yours. Not the way I want her. You're pretty smart. Someday I'll buy you a Ouija board. Come in here. I want the Chicago ready to sail tonight, crew aboard and provision. That's going to take some jump when I laid off the regular crew. Well, find a new crew and put those long boxes marked electrical conduit on board. Take the conduit out. All I want is the box. And put several hundred of those Japanese watches in my car right now. What's the name of our man in Canton? Keem. Now, you're not planning on crossing the line yourself, are you? They don't like us since we insisted on gold payment. That word that came to stand by with a truck. Get me tied in current tables, also a weather report. What about flags? Same as always. We got Chinese, British, Nationalist, Philippine. Take your pick. Get me Thailand, too. Step on it. Yes, sir. Lee here. Hello, Hank. It's Thursday morning, and I'm right on the dot, like you asked. I couldn't find out nothing from the junk master about Hoyt, but I found out something that'll interest you more. 
Rene Savale had a friend who came down on the night boat from Macau last night. It pays to have friends, Hank. You ain't never learned that. Come on, come on. Oh, this friend of Rene's is at the roulette table in Macau last night, only he ain't having as good a time as a sucker by the name of Roca, who was tossing money around like it was rice. Rene's friend gets a look at the signature on a check he cashed. It was signed Jane Hoyt. <laughs> now, am I off the hook, Hank? Tell Rene to meet me in front of the ferry building, Kowloon side, in 30 minutes. And he better be there. Sober. Stoker. Yes, sir. Have the Chicago ready to sail in an hour. That's impossible. I have no crew yet. Stop whining and get one. Anybody. Yes, sir. This a one way or round trip? Since when did you have anything to lose? Dozen. Captain, not here. That's all right. I'll take a look around. Something, Inspector? That is against the law. No. I'm afraid I just have to take this junk in custody until it's removed. Oh, that's a shame. That's a pretty handy little gadget, provided you have enough men to operate it. But I suppose you have to do your duty. <sighs> it's good to be on board again. Sit down, Inspector. Relax. Did you ever taste American bourbon? No, I can't say that I have. Well, those two decanters there, the one on the right was brewed by my maiden name. Pour me one, will you? A ship. 
always been curious about her. To the Queen. To the Queen. Oh, this is scarcely an imperative. Your aunt must have been quite a forceful woman. You know, I'd like to look in on America someday. Yeah, so would I. Cheers. Cheers. I regret having to tie up your vessel. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I always try to cooperate in any way I can. Yes, of course. Wait a minute. This junk is moving. Make yourself comfortable. We'll have lunch in a little while. This is an example of your American humor. I don't think much of it. I order you to stop this vessel. Sit down. I give the orders here. Do you realize what you're doing? Sure. You're holding a crown officer against his will. Among other things. Oh, by the way, these are awful good cigars, Inspector. I never smoke cigars. Put that gun away. I can't tell you how pleased I am to have you on board for a few days, Inspector. As soon as we've cleared the harbor, make yourself comfortable. That uh, bunk over there is yours. Eat and drink all you want. Consider yourself a guest on the yachting cruise. You must be out of your mind. You'll have the whole British fleet after you. We don't want any trouble out here. No, neither do I, but I got it. Yes, sir, I sure do like your looks, Inspector. I have a hunch my aunt would, too. Portuguese Macau? I'm just making sure somebody doesn't declare war on me. It's an old Yankee custom. People take advantage of you when you're weak. I found that out long ago. Lay off that, will you? Come on. Look here, Lee. I demand that you... Oh, very well. I request that you put me ashore in Macau. Improve your mind while I'm gone. Try those magazines. Oh, why can't I go with you? Because tonight I need Rene. Tomorrow night I may welcome your company. Oh, and I wouldn't go on deck if I were you. Ying Fai may mistake you for a boarder, and those stern windows, forget it. Unless you're an Olympic swimmer, you are too far offshore. Captain Hank, crew no good water people. They don't like go Canton. Maybe give trouble. Can't you talk them out of it? Make sweet talk? No can. Much afraid. They say maybe never come back. I'll pay them off and dump them ashore. We'll sail it ourselves. No, ship too big. No can. You must be getting old, Ying. Older than an old woman. Shaving, obviously. You're a fool if you go back to the gambling. You'll lose everything. You're going with the women. Jealousy does not become you. I'll tell the police where the money came from. Answer the door. I'm not here. Was it? Speak up, woman. What did you tell them? I said you were here. Why, you? I did not know it was you, Hank. You do now. Where's Mrs. Hoyt? Who is she? You cashed a check at the Central Gambling Hall last night. Oh, not me. Is she a friend of yours? She's sleeping in my room. Now, Hank, wait a minute. I can explain. I did not know she was a friend of yours. Hank!
Where's the money? In his back pocket, what's left of it. Where's your room? To the right in the hall, the key's by the door. Wait outside. I want you to take Mrs. Hoyt to the ferry for Hong Kong. Get her the best room on board. And you know what'll happen to you if you don't watch it like a bank vault, sober. I understand perfectly. like this without me. Are you all right? Take me away from here. There are a lot of places I'd like to take you. Where? Anywhere. Just so we could be together for a long time. I was dreaming about you. You kissed me. That almost wasn't a dream. If we went away together, the thought of Lewis would go along. Always be with us. It'd be a poor beginning. Yes, I guess you're right. Come on, let's get out of here. Renee. Hello, Jane. Rennie will take you back to the hotel. If you need anything, ask him. Well, where are you going? After that husband of yours. If I deliver Lewis in one solid piece, uh, are you going back to the States with him? I'm his wife. I suppose you think I'm naive to believe that a marriage should be lived up to. No. It figures. You know, all my life I wanted to meet someone like you, someone I could believe in. I was beginning to think there wasn't anyone. I never thought I'd find out the hard way. Can I trust you to be a little cagier with this? Thanks for knowing you. Some sleep. I'll call you at dawn. I sleep on deck near you. How's your family? Rice bowl full. Ying, what would you do with the Chicago if she was yours? Catch many fish. Who would help you? Why, sons come by and buy more sons. Well, if we get back, the Chicago is yours. How can it be? You have sons. My sons won't need a junk in America. You go home. Go on, get some sleep. Now that we've had our exercise, I suppose it would be presumptuous to ask whether this slave ship is bound. Canton. I must confess, I rather like your American cigarettes. A little strong, though, like your whiskey. We'll make a yank out of you yet. Quite content as I am, thank you. Not to change the subject, but we have a charge d'affaires in Canton. Any hope of putting me ashore with him? No, nope, I may need you. You're putting me in an awful spot, you know. I can't help it. That gun under my cabin needs a couple of men to get real firepower. I've always thought a lot of the English at a pinch. I'm a policeman, not a gunner. You should have kidnapped the Royal Navy. 
You'll steer. Anyway, where we're going, the police that count wear a different kind of uniform. Very anxious to get this fellow Hoyt out of jail. How'd you know his name was Hoyt? Police who really count know a lot of things. Most charming wife. <laughs> What's so funny? Your face. So I go along on the expedition. You have no choice. I shall definitely get the sack. Then they'll lose a good cop. That was a purely personal matter I could do with a little excitement. Want this pointing at you or away from you? Yeah? All things ready. Box is sure. Mud's fog now. Sampan waiting. Pay girl much money. No speak. Good. How about Keen? Oh, waiting sure side in truck. Come on. It's a bit too snugly for a chap who's still breathing. Yum Who's Hoyt? Now what, more of those question and answer games? Come, quick!
跟住啊，系啦，系啦，即刻啦Come after me. I've been asking myself the same question. You got a fine wife, Lloyd. Is she all right? Yeah, she's all right. King Five, go below. Start the motors. Inspector, go forward. Get ready to cut the anchor rope. Right, come with me. Can you read a compass? I can follow an aircraft compass. On a ship, it's just backwards. Stand there with the tiller. Steer the course I give you. Spanker, let her go! King Fly, stand by to take sounding. Sing out in Cantonese when you mark less than five fathoms. White, did you ever walk a tightrope? I've been in one for the past three months. Well, you're on another one. Nobody in his right mind to try going down this river at night in a fog. Mud shoals and rocks on both sides, mostly unmarked. We don't hit something, we're just plain lucky. Sup, Bartel? Your name is Henry Lee, right? How'd you know? They showed me a picture of you with Jane. Oh. They don't miss many tricks it wasn't easy to look at. This compass must have belonged to Marco Polo. Why don't you buy a new one? I'm sort of losing interest in junks and all that goes with them. Oh? What interests you now? Don't mind my question. It's just that I haven't talked to a real human being for a long time. Yeah, well, if you get out of this, you better get yourself a job in a nice, quiet bank. Not me. Some people get shot out of cannons for a living. Some people climb out. They want to get to the top, see what's on the other side. It's habit forming. Going to put your neck in the ringer again? Probably. Climb another mountain somewhere. Can't help it. I might as well face it. So should Jane. And uh, now steer 150 degrees. We ought to be working around Haddington Island. 150 degrees. Yeah, see, Jim. Three fathoms. I've been thinking about that picture. You didn't risk your neck just to save a perfect stranger. You must be pretty stuck on Jane. You better keep your mind on your compass. My eyes are taking care of that. They saw something else in that picture because they were trained to see. How does she feel about you? Why don't you ask her? I don't think I'll have to. Yeah, see, Jim. Or fathoms. Maybe some skeet shooting after a bit. Around me. Right on the back porch, the step line. He's a PP, all right, and fairly fast. We can't slug it out with him. He carries two machine guns and a deck gun forward. 
I pray for more wind. The next round will be over and a third down our throats. Inspector, go on deck, take the tiller. Let her fall off a little for a fair wind. Then send the inside out. Uncover that gun. Well, I'll be. The biggest thing I ever stole. Chicago's is the fastest junk in China. If the diesels don't blow up, we might just leave them, but I don't know. These hold 20 rounds. You stand by to replace the empties. Uncover that port. Anything ahead? Only the island. You go on deck. Trim sail for the inspector. Too great. Take a lot of elevation to lob them that far. Well, here it goes. It's short, just like I figured. Isn't he changing course? If we can keep him evading and changing speed, it just might work. That was close. He'll improve. This is it! That time has come to get a little fancy. You're in an awful lot of trouble. Is there a Band-Aid on this bucket? I seem to be leaking. King, what's that? Here's a pain pill, swallow it. It'll make me dopey. I can still help. I can load with my right hand. Come on, we're back in business. Captain Hank, more the people come. Tell the inspector to steer for the middle of them. had a navy. <laughs> I don't, but sometimes it pays to have friends. Is this free air? It sure is. <laughs> Your breakfast, monsieur. Thank you, Robin. of Pan American Clipper Rainbow from Manila and San Francisco via Guam, Wake Island, and Honolulu. Passengers will kindly board the motor bus at the street door. Well, up we go. Or do we? Hmm? 
You don't want to go, do you? Yes. You're pretending that isn't like you or us. I know. I'll work it out. If there were a door, I'd knock. Hello. I thought you went home. I got as far as the airport. Where's Lewis? He said he'd write to me from wherever the mountains were the highest. He also said marriage wasn't for him. You still love him? I'll always love him. But I've discovered there's a big difference between loving someone and being in love. 